So Gary's got, brought up a question that we asked right away, and Air Cookie's answering it about E131. Yes. Well, we maybe we can do that live on the stream. What do you think? Uh, you want to try it now? <laughs> okay, let's try <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey. <laughs> let's try it. Let's try it. X lights makes me nervous. <laughs> yeah. This makes me nervous. This makes me nervous. We're gonna have to come up with a new controller. So let's go new controller here. Would it be Ethernet? No, E one thirty one. Okay. IP address. I know the IP address of this thing. No, please don't make me have to watch that. <laughs> oh god. Oh gosh, oh, I'm telling you, nobody is more scared of it than me. <laughs> We won't we won't hack on this for too long. We won't hack on this for too no. long. This we'll we'll try this briefly and if we then can make we will, something blink, it's a win. Yeah, oh there you go. We'll make we'll try to make something blink. I don't know. I'm just gonna put ten universes. Sure. I don't know how many it's in that end up having to be. Um layout. <laughs> We're gonna do actually we'll try four single lines like this. I don't so understand. I thought I'd uh, show them a closer look of the board. There it is. Yes, zoom in. Yes, distractions. We need distractions. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I'll give you some time. <laughs> so, as as we mentioned, this is the Quinn LED Dig Quad. Uh, it's still very solderable by hand, uh, but there is a pre-assembled version coming. And, um, yeah, so beneath the ESP, just like on the Dig Uno, there is four output terminals over here. And then you have seven positive terminals and seven negative terminals to which you can, uh, you know, output power. And they're going through five of these fuses. So fuse one does the first two screw terminals, fuse two does the second two, and then fuse three, four, and five each have, it, have their own output terminal. So you can divide uh, your LED strips over those and, uh, you know, hook it up. It has three input negative and three input positive terminals to make it, uh, well, handle a lot of power. And you just plug the ESP32 on top of it. And it's still pretty compact of a board, uh, but you can drive now multiple channels and uh, have lots of power handling, 5 volt, 12 volt, level shifted, etc. Awesome. That was a perfect distraction. In the meantime, <laughs> did I get it working? And we've got Scott here, who's an X-Lights developer for the last year. Oh, nice. Uh, why have a power on the board? Is it switchable with the MOSFET? Um, so uh, why can have power go through the board? I think you mean, well, otherwise you can't use the fuses and you'd have to do that externally. So now it's a power distribution board with fuses and the LED controller in one. So you don't have to use external fuses anymore, especially if you have like a 50 amp power supply. It's really recommended to use some fuses there because, well, you can easily start a fire. Uh, it does not have a MOSFET, but what it does have, and let me see if my other camera is still working, and while you're probably not going to be able to see it, is this little green connector, which is probably gone on your screen, <laughs> because it's a, you know, green screen. <laughs> yeah. That is. is a 5 volt EXT connector. I have, uh, I have a different board here with all green connectors. But there, the, the, that connector isn't on there. So the 5 volt EXT connector I put on there if you want to use a big 5 volt or 12 volt power supply for your LEDs. And then you can use a smaller, like a phone charger or whatever, power supply 5 volt for the board electronics only. And then if you set in WLED to turn off the LEDs, you can connect a relay using the broken out GPIO pins. The relay will turn off the big power supply, so all LEDs will turn off. But the board will remain reachable for WLED or Home Assistant or whatever you're using. So that way you can save power when you turn off the LEDs. So you can have a dual power supply setup, basically. But if you have a closet, for instance, and you want to do four shelves or you want to do four pillars, I often get the question. Before, you'd have to loop around the data wire and have to do all kinds of intricate wiring to make it one long string. Now you just have four output channels, so you can have a data wire go to each pillar, for instance, and just wire it up that way. And you don't have to make it one giant snake of a, an LED strip and just divide it up that way. And then you can make each pillar do their own effects and stuff like that, too. So it has a lot of benefits in 
medium to larger LED projects. Smaller LED projects, you just want to hook up a single strip. Just get a Quinn LED dig Uno, hook up that strip, you'll be happy. But if you want to do something more complex or bigger LED project or multiple strings and stuff like that, uh, or even just multiple LED strips and power injection, yeah, the dig quad will help a lot with that. Make it very, a lot simpler. Yeah. We'll give you, give you another minute to see if you can troubleshoot the audio. And if you can't, then let's try Discord just for audio. Yeah? It's a no-go? Well, add, add nah, a Discord oh, call for audio. You that's okay. That. That's okay. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream, Scott. <laughs> All right, so we're going to deal with a little bit of echo. But hey, Scott, thanks for being here. Welcome. Yeah, sorry, this the Skype was saying I don't have a valid mic, but then I jump in here and it says I'm good, so I don't know what. Let's get busting on X lights. Thank you so much for your first for your work on X lights. Uh, oh, wow. It's it's fantastic, and um, even though I am still, I mean, it's been I've even been trying for a couple of years, but it, the problem is I do it kind of part time. You know, I'll try it and I'll understand some things, and then I'll put it aside for months, and then I'll try and come back. And I haven't, I still have not established a an actual massive show at my house. That's probably why I haven't consistently gotten into it. Um, but thank you for being willing uh, to be here and to be and to give me some input on this. Yeah. So I was on your stream last uh, uh, winter, if you remember too. Probably not. Were you? Was it the yeah. last time I tried to do X lights? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and I'm no better now than I was. Yeah. The problem is, is like getting the start channels right. So, so then in the layout tab. Click okay. the string two model and then go to start channel and hit the three dots. The start channels, it'll be, it oh, says there. percent two if you highlight it. Select the end oh, of wow. model, the third bubble down, and then select uh, string one. And that drop down right next to end of model. Like in the dialogue, you were just in the little dialogue. Go back to okay, it. Okay, there it is. I'm not actually, we don't have to do the math in this case, Quindor. We can, we just are telling it. Yeah, if we you want you to start where the last string stops. Yeah, now if you yeah, save cool, there cool. and just go back to your sequence and do like a render all and then output and see what it does. And it's just the first one. Oh, no, no, no. It's working. We did it. But I, when I, by we, I mean you. Yes. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> we did it. Nice. We, yeah, fantastic. Thank you, Scott. Okay, so we're going to go back to x -Lite settings so we can summarize this for anybody who, who dares to try it again. I've added the Dig Quad as an E131 Ethernet, put the uh, IP address in here. The channels per universe is set to 512. Now we go to the layout, and what I did was I set up just a single line, and each one I set to 300 nodes per string. So that may be a little messed up because it then thinks that there's 300 on each one. Yeah, and that just makes the start channels correct because you have 300 in the WLED per string in the compiled option. So if you if you compile it yourself, you can you can set that exactly to what yours are. But in this case, yeah, set it to three hundred, and at least you're going to get something for the start channel. So for the first one, the start channel is just number one colon one. For the second one, we went in here, and we selected end of model, and then from we which model is what you select from this drop down, and that model is single line, and that's the first one. That's this single line model right here. And then we just did the same thing for each of these. We go to here, end of model, and this one in this case, we're going to start from the end of model. Ah, because two. it thinks it has 300 LEDs, it's automatically correct. Yeah. Yep. yeah if you look at the yeah, parentheses, okay. it says well, the exact the start channel, so it goes 1, 901, yeah. you know, 18. So it's doing every 900, which is 300 LEDs. So we're there. See, I knew that. All that, all that struggle, and we got, we got Scott on here, and we did it in about 10 seconds. That's really cool. So dig quad, multi-output alpha functionality in WLED. And running the same WLED, you can also use it for E131. I'm really happy. And there you go. <laughs> I thought it was just going to take months to, you know, get some basic functionality in WLED. And I know Air Cookie has been working on it, but, you know, this this little mod that enables it for now with some restrictions is really yeah, cool. Yeah, it's not bad. It is not bad. It will only get better, but this is, yeah, this is absolutely, I, I'm with you. This is more functional than I expected it to be, especially with E131 and X lights. I mean, that's just crazy. Yeah. Scott, while we got you here, what else is happening in the X lights development world? 
I've been talking to Eric Cookie a little bit about integrating the WLED controller better into this. So instead of having to manually configure stuff like we kind of always do, we could just, there's those upload bo options on the bottom, which upload automatically to controllers that configs. I'd like someday to make it so WLED works with this to be a lot easier. So you could just kind of figure this out and hit upload and be done. So LEDs are just getting cooler and cooler. More and more accessible. Absolutely. More and more accessible, more and more awesome for, for the regular Joes out there. So thanks for doing all that. One of the coolest things from the newest version of WLED is the ability to put in custom background. So oh, yeah. I'm going to show you. I haven't played with that yet. I, oh, it's awesome. So let's do it right now. Um, so you grab any image. Okay, here you go. This one. Um, copy link address. No, let's see. I want to copy image address. Copy <laughs> image address. Then you go in here. And I'm trying to remember where it is. Uh, user interface. And there it is. Background image URL. And you just paste in that image that you just grabbed. Okay, so it's saved. So you go back here. And there it is. Look at that. Now you can have any image. It's just a URL image. It's not, it's not locally uploaded to the ESP32 chip or it's not living on your computer. This is something that if you want it to be a picture of your own stuff then you just have to put it somewhere where it's publicly accessible URL. And, and so if you wanted a picture of your house or of your kids or something, you know, that's on you, but you, you make it publicly accessible and then you can use the URL here. Is that awesome? And it's got a lot of this latest version of WLED also has a lot of um, other user interface things like uh, you can change the background uh, hex color. So the background color, this will be like of the top bar and stuff. So let's go back and look at that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now it's kind of purpley instead of black up here. And it's still, it's fairly transparent. Cool. You can change some of that too. Let's see, sync. Uh, background opacity and button opacity you can change as well. You can make them really, really opaque or really transparent. Yeah, so I think if people are using a lot of WLED. It's nice if you bought our boards and stuff like that. That's awesome. But go to the WLED GitHub, and then on the bottom of the page, there is a thank you link to PayPal. You can send Air Cookie, you know, just a few bucks. Or a and, lot of bucks. But he keeps improving, improving the software, and I think it's really worth it. He's giving it away for free, but I, I want him to keep continuing uh, doing development. So... I donate to him now and then. I, I think that helps out. So just so people know, on the GitHub, go to the bottom of the page, and there's a PayPal donation link for Air Cookie. He really deserves it. It's so interesting how when somebody says you have to pay for something, like you have a tax or, or something you have to do, we all feel no, a little bit less generous than when it's like, hey, here's my thing. It's free. You know, you're welcome to use it. Then I feel like, oh, I'll give you a bunch. I'll give you more than I would if you were asking me to pay so yeah it's yeah. a good community it's this this whole open source thing is uh it's awesome so they have this i hate dark mode if anybody ever wanted to turn off dark mode you could do that i don't know why you would <laughs> you actually put that in there but you can turn off dark mode um show the button the button tab bar in pc mode so that would be the bottom bar uh so anyways you can take the you can take the labels off of this and uh, you can turn on or turn off this bottom bar too. So those are just a cool, oh, you can actually do these as well. You can change some of this other stuff here. So I changed a couple more things here. I got rid of, you can see, I got rid of the color wheel. If you didn't want the color wheel, you can do the slider bars instead. Or if you wanted to exactly do a hex code for a color, you can do that instead. Um, oh, and I took cool. off the pre colors. Those are just options. I just want to show you the options that you have. And I took off the bottom bar down here. How should we sign off, kitties? What do you think? Like, let, no, like we got our wisdom teeth out. Okay, we're going to stream. We're going to sign off like we got our wisdom teeth taken out, okay? As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios. Bye. <laughs> okay, thanks, baby. Bye, everybody. If you need help or want to chat with me or others who also enjoy projects like this, you can find us on Facebook and Discord. If you like what I'm doing and you want to support me, 
you can use my special product links in the video description or head over to Patreon or just like and share my videos. That's easy. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, this box will take you to a playlist of some of my favorites. In addition to videos like this, I also do live streams every Sunday. This box will take you to a recording of the latest live stream. That's all for now. Adios.